Welcome, peoples and peoplets, to Whale Talks Wrestling episode 79. It's been a while. Last time we did Blood and Guts, and here we are for AEW Double or Nothing 2021. Full capacity crowd. That was that was the best part of this paper. This is this was a good show. Uh, it was a very good show, worth the money. Like I said, a lot of people don't really like the long pay per views. I'm half and half, cause if I'm paying for it, I want it to be as long as possible. You know, if I'm paying the fifty bones, and you know, you only do like four a year, make it as long as you can. I'm actually okay with it, but you know, it does drag on a little bit. It does, you know, sometimes ruin the show a little bit. But I thought this was a good pay per view. It dragged a little bit at the end, but. Uh, that that I was mostly pissed because the stadium stampede was the main event. It should have been the fucking world title. I hate when the world title is not in the main event. It annoys the crap out of me. And it, it takes me out of the of the match that it is. So, but let's get right into it. AEW, there were nothing. Full capacity crowd. Serena, my God, I'm so used to calling her Serena Dweeb. <laughs> Serena Deeb versus Riho for the NWA title, or as I put the Nah title, because I I suck at writing notes. This was a fantastic match. This is one of my favorite matches on the show. The crowd was hot. Uh, Serena with a nasty dragon screw acting out very heel in this match. I'm glad because her character is kind of bland, but she's an amazing wrestler. And, you know, Riho's just Riho. Riho's great. Uh, neckbreaker on the rope. A draping neckbreaker on the rope by Serena. That was awesome. Uh, double stomp by Riho. Goes for the 619. Uh, beautiful counter that Rio, Rio, uh, was very impressive with this counter. So, you know, Rio is like fucking what, like a hundred pounds soaking wet, maybe, you know? So Serena locks in the guillotine and Rio actually powers her up into a Northern Lights, one of the most beautiful bridges I've ever seen. Rio and Pac have like the best bridge I've ever seen. Double dragon screw leg whip into a power bomb, stacked power bomb by Serena for a near fall. Uh, Dragon Rush by Riho. You know, she's just doing the Kenny moves now. Um, Serena locks in the Serenity Lock. She just bashes the knee, bashes the knee. Locks in the Serenity Lock. The Tequila Sunrise for the win. Great match. Did not expect to see Riho tap out here, but she bent Riho back. That's the best thing about fighting Riho. She can sell like no other because she's so tiny. She can just, you know, turn into a fucking pretzel for you. So that was fucking dope. That was great. Then we start with the real opener. By the way, that match should have been on the main card. Bullshit. Uh, then we start the real opener. Cage versus Adam Page. Uh, this is a great fucking match. Fucking Hangman is so over, man. I don't understand how they don't put the title on this guy very soon. I'm telling you, that's the only person I want to see Kenny losing to. Just so the people can have their champion, you know? Uh, so, uh, Cage, uh, Page with a suicide dad to start the match, then Cage with a power bomb into the pole, uh, he picks up, um, Cage picks up Adam Page and starts curling him, I love that shit, moonsault to the outside by Hangman, uh, very beautiful moonsault, Magilla Carter by Cage, I was like, yo, rip a set for the Curtis Axel, <laughs> I was like, oh shit, for a dear fall, at that point I wanted Cage to win, because you know, Michael Magilla Cuddy is my boy, uh, superplex on the ramp by Cage to Page. That was nasty. Hangman bounced off the floor. That, ouch, that had to hurt. Top rope, F5. I actually thought this had it by Cage. Uh, he kicks out, picks him up. Uh, Adam Page squeezes out. Is an F5 of his own. That was awesome. Uh, Cage does this fucking awesome sequence where he, like, power bombs him. Buckle bombs and power bombs and spiral power bomb. It's a nasty German suplex that I thought Adam Page was dead. Uh, here comes Stark and Hook and everybody. They throw the FTW title in. Uh, Cage throws it out. He's like, I don't need your fucking help. You know what I'm saying? Gets distracted. Gets mollywopped with the fucking buckshot lariat for the win. And we are at one to one with Cage turning babyface soon. Cage is pissed. He's confronting Ricky and Hook. Uh, Ricky look, looks at him. He's like, you don't touch me. I have, you know, I have a fractured neck. Do not touch me. He keeps pointing at his neck like a maniac. And Cage just walks off. So I'm very intrigued on the Cage babyface turn. I think it's going to be awesome. But this is a great match. Hangman was as over as anyone can be. It, it was fantastic. Uh, Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus the Young Bucks, and this was a surprising match to me. Like, I, don't get me wrong, 
I knew this match was going to be good. I didn't think this match was going to be fucking this good. This match was awesome just because the crowd were so into anything Eddie Kingston did. Uh, the Bucks were on their true heel shit today. So many great moments in this match. Oh, man. Like, legit, I, I wanted the Young Bucks to retain because I am loving their title run. But for a little slight second, I kind of wanted Eddie to win just so Eddie Kingston can win a fucking title. But I'm like, that that's how bad they actually got me into this match. But this is awesome. Uh, people love the Wild Thing entrance. Like I said, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of the song itself. But as the crowd loves it, whatever. I would have rather have Moxley come out to Shetless. I thought that would be fucking dope. Uh, big brawl to start the match. Basically, they're fighting it out their style. Uh, Mox and Eddie Kingston. They take out Brandon <laughs> uh, with the, the fucking uh, violent crown. The fucking half and half into the clothesline. That's awesome move. Uh, poke to the eye to Kingston and the Bucks take advantage. Uh, fucking, I love Matt Jackson so much. So he starts hitting Hulk Hogan's entire comeback. Uh, I don't know why he does this, but it's fucking hilarious, brother. A pile driver to both bucks by uh, Moxley. Bullet Club comes out, but Frankie takes uh, um, fucking Carl Anderson out. He's the Bullet Club hunter now. He's Yoshitatsu's old gimmick. Uh, bucks use the cold spray. Meltzer driver to Moxley on the outside. That was nasty looking. Mox is busted open. He's bleeding like a stuffed pig, brother. Uh, they try to go for the shield power bomb. They do the fist bump, and you see Mac Jackson. Ooh, I was like, oh hell no! Fucking Moxie gets off. He starts beating the shit. I'm like that's right. You don't talk shit about the tribal chief, baby. You don't insult the tribal chief. Uh, Four fifty on Mox, but he kicks out. Doomsday Dior's Day device, as uh, Excalibur call it. Great call because they did a Doomsday device with the fucking expensive ass shoes. Uh, Mox is bleeding in the sharpshooter, old Stone Cold style. That was awesome. They even did the camera exactly like it. Uh, seven super kicks. Mox kicks out at one. He no sells that shit. BTE trigger. Moxley no sells it. And then they hit another BTE trigger, another BTE trigger, and they get the win. What a great fucking match. This was awesome. They should take out Moxley for a while. I'm thinking. But this is freaking great. This is awesome. Uh, I love the Young Bucks tag team matches right now. They, like, they're the only people I really want to see do have tag team matches. Because they're great. Casino Battle Royale. This was a weird match. This match was kind of dumb. But it picked up so well at the end. Max Caster's killing it in the rap game. Until for some reason he freezed up with Dustin Rhodes. He insulted everybody you know. Christian Edge. Ah, ha, 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 funny. And then I'm just like, yeah, okay, it's time to insult Dustin Rhodes and Powerhouse Hobbs. He doesn't insult Powerhouse Hobbs. And then he just looks at Dustin for like two minutes and just, yo, yo, yo. I'm like, is he trying to get back on B? I don't know what's happening. Uh, but Christian's the first one in. Pentagon comes out dressed as the Joker, baby. Uh, Leo Rush is the actual Joker card. I, I popped huge for Leo Rush. I love Leo Rush. Uh, Jungle Boy is in there surviving. Christian's in there surviving. It's, the eliminations made no sense. Max Caster got eliminated right away. Fuck it. I felt bad for freaking my Matt Seidel. He got eliminated in the first five seconds. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, all the people that wanted, like, he, uh, fucking even Christian got booed for eliminating Max Caster. Like, you could have left him in there. But Jungle Boy ends up surviving the whole match with Christian. I thought predictably Christian was going to win. I thought Christian should have won, but legit midway, uh, no, that was actually before the match started. I was like, I would not mind if Jungle Boy won or made it to the end because he deserves it. He's fucking great. But that was awesome. That they had a that little match exchange between Christian and Jungle Boy was fucking dope. I loved how Jungle Boy used Christian's pendulum kick to almost eliminate him too. That was awesome. But this is uh this was a shit beginning. But it got a lot better later on. Uh, Nick Camarado got eliminated by Dustin. And then, you know, he got hit with a bull rope. And now they're having a bull rope match. Big Dick Camarado. <laughs> it's just a funny name. And then we get the low point of the show. We got the American Warrior, Captain America. Uh, we got the 4th of July as a person. We have the fucking 50 stars and the 13 bars. Cody, effing American dream. 
firework roads versus Anthony Agogo. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I really got to stop questioning Cody when he goes in to fight somebody. I already know Cody's going to win. But I, for a little bit, I'm like, you know, maybe Anthony Agogo's going to win. You know? He's fucking dope. I fucking love Anthony Agogo. Everything about this dude is awesome. He keeps jerking off the people. Fucking great. He has a jerk off elbow. He's fucking awesome. I love him. Uh, we started off. Anthony Agogo is very impressive. Angle slam by Agogo. Uh, Cody locks in a cattle mutilation. That was pretty dope. Nasty clothesline by Agogo. Destroys Cody on it. Uh, hits a beautiful reverse F5, which I, I my dumbass forgot that um, Kenny King used to do that shit. The Royal Flush. That was dope. I love that move. Cody Carter, baby. And this is where I get real pissed off. We spent two months telling us if Anthony Agogo punches somebody, they're going to die. Anthony Agogo punches Cody in the gut. Cody does not give a fuck. He doesn't even sell it. Then he punches him in the face. What does Cody do? Not even sell it. He doesn't fucking care. So Anthony Agogo's punched Cody about six or seven times. I'm like, what happened to this guy's punches? He just made Austin Gunn like cry and bleed. And Cody just got abs of steel. Fuck him in the face of steel. So then I'm like, okay, maybe they'll do the finish I wanted. I wanted Cody to put Anthony Agogo in the figure four. And Anthony Agogo punches him in the face. And that's the, that's the, that's it. Because if he could punch people in the gut, what happens when he punches you in the face? So we do the spot. He locks in the figure four. Anthony Agogo punches him in the face. Cody legit no-sells it. Nothing. And then Anthony Agogo just switches over to the figure four. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I turn to Tony Schiavone. I, I, I'm, a, I'm beyond pissed at this point how, like, Cody's legit making this dude's punches look like a chump even though they told us this dude... You know, his theme song says he has Fist of Stone, whatever, I guess not. So, a go-go uh, gets busted open. He obviously blades. You, you know, they cut the camera and then Cody just starts, you know, <gasps> I'm like, okay, uh, Anthony a go-go's blading. And then he comes up and he has this perfect cut. I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, I don't know why a go-go had a blade. It should have been Cody. You know, he loves that shit, you know. American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Uh, so, you know, there we go. So, a go-go's blading. Uh, Cody, like I said, survives all his punches. A go-go goes for the British hammer. That's, you know, his pop-up punch. Maybe that punch could work. I don't fucking know. Cody blocks that shit. Goes for the crossroads. A go-go reverses. Cody then locks in the vertebraker. And for a split second, Anthony Agogo almost died because he didn't tuck his neck. But he was able to... Cody basically held him there until he tucked his neck. He just, like, deadlifted him there. He's like, tuck your fucking neck, brother. And then he hits the vertebraker, and that's it. Cody Rhodes wins. America. Yep. You know, Anthony Gogo had two matches and already lost because, you know, Cody. And lost decisively, too. Lost pretty fairly. You know, it's not like he, you know, used a nightmare fan. You know, no, just, you know fuck, fuck Anthony Gogo. So this kind of brought the pay-per-view down for me a little bit because I was just like, I should just stop betting against Cody. I really need to stop. And that's the worst part. I really like Cody. Cody's actually one of my favorites. He's just like, Cody's fucking ridiculous. Like, dude, you're not John Cena. <laughs> you're not a fucking army veteran or whatever the fuck. You're not, like, you know, America. In, uh, yeah, I, I'm done. Let's get into something good. Vance Archer is Nero. TNT title. Uh, walking the rope. Uh, Vance Archer almost dies in the beginning of this match. He dives onto Miro and almost kills himself. I'm like, all right. He also wants to kill himself after watching the Anthony Agogo match. <laughs> it sucks, too, because Anthony Agogo was so fucking impressive in that match, dude. He Like, he was... Tit for tat, you know? Uh, walking the rope old school into a moonsault. Choke slam through the table by Archer. Miro with a big, uh, I put shopping heel kick. It's a spinning heel kick. Uh, the helicoaster by Archer for a near fall. Uh, Jake the Snake comes out with a bag and a, you know, I don't think there was really a snake in there, of course. He comes out with a snake, and, you know, he beats him up. And then Miro tosses the fucking snake. And for some reason, JR, JR who has been, you know, barely non-existent in this pay-per-view turns right up and he's like that son of a bitch i can't believe he tossed a snake that motherfucker i'm just like god damn jr you mess with you mess. jr is a big uh big snake fan i guess <laughs> for some reason my man got high he's like oh hell no uh fucking another big choke slam by archer this is probably one of the best choke slams i've ever seen he got 
up there. Uh, Archer with the bounce uh, for a near fall. Miro gets him. And then I hate when they casually do this. So Miro's about to go for the game. Over. You know, he stomps the back and then randomly like, oh, by the way, Archer had back surgery last year. Oh, no. And I'm like, you could have told us that before the mat or during the mat. You know, Miro's working the back because Archer's had back surgery. Not conveniently. Oh, Archer back day. <laughs> and I say, you know, game over. You know, he locks it in. He's trying to bridge it all the way back, all the way. But Archer's not giving in. And then, you know, he, uh, he like slowly goes into it. But the way Archer makes this weird noise that just made me like, it was like, <laughs> and then, you know, uh, he gets the tap out win. Like I said, they should have not put Archer in this situation because this dude loses way too much. Especially big matches. Every big title match he's had, he's lost. TNT title tournament to Cody, which was fucking garbage. Uh, world title match with uh, um, Moxley. And now another title match. This guy loses everything. Everybody loses. <laughs> so, you know, that, that I just said, Miro should not be losing anyone. But I like this match. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD versus Hikaru Shida for the AEW women's title. The slightly bigger one. Uh, a lot of chain, chain wrestling to started off, but sadly the crowd was not super into this. Um, they got more into it later with the dual chant and everything, but they were a little quiet. Uh, a bunch of knees to Brit or Reba um, tries to hit Sheeta with a crutch, but end up blasting Britt Baker in the face. Uh, then a, a gross-looking falcon arrow. It looked very bad, but Sheeta hit the falcon arrow. Uh, curb stop on the belt, but Sheeta kicks out. That was crazy. Britt Baker has been trying to lock in the lockjaw for the whole entire match. I love Sheeta's attire, the all-white big fight feel. Uh, I also love the Scott Hall attire by Britt Baker. That was awesome. Uh, she finally, finally locks in the lockjaw, and Sheeta legit taps out. I, I, I'm shocked she just tapped out. They gave her the clean as a victory. Uh, like I said, much respect to Sheeta. She's been one of my favorite women's champions all around. She carried the damn division for a year, especially in the beginning where they had no women. This poor girl legit carried this whole division on her back. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, like I said, much respect to Britt Baker. She's gotten a lot better. She was absolute dookie in the beginning. And then her promo game went up. And then everything, her character, her wrestling went up. I, I thought this was an entertaining match. So, good for her. Uh, you know we're going to get that Thunder Rosa match next, but I actually want to see Chris Statliner be the one to take the title off Sheeta. I mean, um, Doi, uh, Britt Baker. And then, uh, I don't know, I feel like they could do something with Sheeta and Riho on the side. I think that would be fucking dope. Then we get, yo, this this match, this match hyped me the fuck up, bro. I, t- I don't care what I do. I said, I will fucking sting, Mark. That's my man. You know, TNA, WCW. Uh, Sting and Darby versus Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. They're the men of the year now. They have a tag team name and a tag team song. So Sting's a fucking psychopath. This dude's first fucking real bump in this many years is a fucking suplex on the concrete. My boy No Cells gets up, takes off the shirt. The crowd pops. I was like, let's fucking go, yo. I was... I was way too hyped in this match because I fucking love Sting. He fucking dives off the fucking potato chips. Oh, the, the poker chips. He takes them all off. I'm like, yo, it's fucking Sting. He's 62. I was like, let's go. Uh, the heels take control for a little bit. All ego throws Darby Allen into the crowd. Gorilla press style. That was awesome. Then we get the tag. The tag. Sting comes in. Gets that comeback. You know, he's letting him have it. Clothesline, clothesline, stinger splash. He's doing all his shit. And then fucking Sting ends up behind Scorpio Sky. Scorpio Sky starts hitting him. And what does he do? He fucking knows that shit. And, ah, he beats the chest. I was like, let's fucking go. So I'm like, Sting, give this man a world title shot right now. I'm going to fuck. <laughs> oh, God. I, I was so up. I felt like a child. I was like, oh, man, just watch me Sting back. You know, WCW, especially TNA. Because Sting, Sting's whole career in TNA to me is very important. I was like, yo, this is fucking go. This is my man. And he did the thing, you know, when he did the fucking... He had a Sting mask on. He took the Sting mask and he was Sting. He does that in every company. That was fucking great. 
So Sting's hitting the comeback. He's going crazy. Scorpio Sky goes for a springboard uh, cutter. Sting catches him, hangs onto a rope. That was a slick-ass reversal. Scorpion death drop. One, two, three. I'll tell you right fucking now. Sting, Darby, tag team title match with the Bucks. That match will blow the roof off the place. I, I really hope Sting is okay after this match. Because this dude carried this fucking match. A 62-year-old man. Made this match crazy. Like, I, I was going nuts. Like I said, call me a mark. I don't care. I'm a fucking mark for Sting. I thought this was dope. It, it legit put a smile on my face. I, I'm smiling just talking about it right now. This shit is dope as shit. Uh, then we get um the what should have been the fucking main event. I was so pissed when this wasn't the main event. Yeah, I was so pissed. I wanted to go take a piss break before the match started. Uh, Kenny versus Orange Cassidy versus Pac. You know, it's Pac, not Pac. Uh, for the AEW World Title, Orange with a nasty tornado DDT on Kenny to start it off. Pac with a moonsault to the outside. Pac with a double drop kick on each one, and then hits he hits a drop kick on each one, and then hits a double drop kick. The you can't escape. He does the roll through, and then gives a backstabber to Pac mid rope. That was awesome. Uh, Kenny picks up Orange Cassidy, and he goes back breaker, and he breaks his fucking back. Hits the rise of the Terminator. You know I love my Kenny matches. <laughs> a couple of dragon rushes for everybody. Nasty looking dragon rushes. Uh, rebound German, then a V trigger by Kenny. That was awesome. He no sell getting hit with the German. Pac has the nastiest rebound German suplex. A top rope German by Pac to Kenny. He does a full turnaround, so he was like, that was good. Jay Driller for a near fall. I thought Orange Cassidy died. I was like, dude, he dropped him right in his fucking head. Coit's Wrath by Kenny. I love when he does that move. Nasty Mitsunoku Driver by Orange Cassidy. And then a nasty brain But This dude said, I don't give a fuck about Orange Cassidy's life. He did a brain bust. He didn't even set him up. Like, legit, he was, just, like, dangling. He just, he just dropped him. I said, that shit is dope. Top rope Falcon Arrow by Pac into a Spaceman Planche. I love that fucking move. Black Arrow onto OC, but Kenny ends up saving it because, you know, no one kicks out. Uh, beach Break by Orange Cassidy kicks out. So an Orange Punch to Pac. An Orange Punch to Kenny. Another Orange Punch. Don Callis comes out, saves the match. He had the match won. Uh, Pac locks in the Brutalizer onto Orange Cassidy. And then uh, here comes Kenny stomping the fuck out of his face. He will not let the submission go. He keeps stomping, stomping, stomping. So Kenny goes, fuck it. And he just attacks the ref. Then Kenny with an awesome spot. This is like my favorite spot of this match. He takes the fucking uh, the AAA title. He hits Pac in the face. He takes the Impact World title. He hits Pac in the face. He takes the TNA world title, he hits Pac in the face. He takes the AEW world title, he hits Pac in the face. He hits Pac with every single fucking title. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, I thought that was great. New ref comes in. OC tries to sneak a win, but then uh, Kenny ends up reversing him. One, two, three, and Kenny Omega retains the world title. No one-winged angel. Crazy. No one-winged angel. I don't know. I thought for a split second they were going to have OC kick out of the one-winged angel. Because, like, you know, he's a weird character. So, I, it, it would kind of make sense. But now the more I think of it, maybe they'll save it for Hangman. I hope they don't, honestly. I, I feel like they should save someone kicking out of the one-winged angel for much later on, you know. So, we'll see. But that match was fucking awesome. What a great three-way. It should have been the main event. Like, ugh. And then comes the real main event, I guess. Not to me, but the Inner Circle versus the Pineapple. The Pinnacle. Uh, the Inner Circle repelled down. That scared the fuck out of me. Uh, they, they repelled down. Some, uh, this is a weird match to, to, to put notes on, but I'll try. Uh, MJF comes in in a fucking um, uh, limo, but he comes by himself. And then the, the fucking uh, the Pinnacle comes in in the pickup truck. Uh, MJF runs in the building, and he runs like he runs like a girl. I'm telling you this right now. I'm sorry, MJF. I love you, kid, but you run like a bitch. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? MJF is getting murdered. He gets put through a table, and he's getting hit with trashes. So each two people had their own territory and their own fight, which I thought was kind of cool. Wardlow and Jake Hagar fight it out in a meat cooler. 
I work in a meat cooler, so I was like, no, I was like, ah, ah, there's meat and pallets and ice everywhere. Uh, Dope Uranagi on a pallet by Hagar. Then Sammy and Spears. Uh, oh, th- th- there was a part where Wardlow got a fucking icicle trying to murder Jake Hagar. That was dope. Uh, Sammy and Spears are in a room full of chairs. I thought that was cool. And, you know, the chairman, he's sitting there like, yo, I might win something. Uh, Sean Spears and Lawn darts Sammy to the door. Handcuffs Sammy with a chain. Leaves him there. Sammy's able to get some bolt cutters, get himself out. Uh, the legend himself, Tully and FTR in a dance club. Santana and Ortiz come out. Conan is the fucking DJ, you know, 5150. Uh, they start beating up everybody on the dance floor. Then they have a drink before they fight it out. I thought that was cool. Hager with a choke slam off a golf cart to Wardlow. And he goes, ah! <laughs> That's the most you're going to get out of Hager. Ah! Uh, MJF with a pile driver on a hard-ass table to Jericho. Jericho gets the bat, starts beating the shit out of MJF. Those are some legit shots, dude. That looked painful. MJF put through glass. You know, he's bladed. A bunch of motorcycles. For some reason, we are told the Inner Circle has a motorcycle club. I, I don't fucking know. They chase down Sean Spears. Uh, powerbomb to MJF's back. Uh, we're back at Daly's place. Chair shot to the head to Sammy by um, Sean Spears. Nasty curve stomp in the corner. Uh, basically, Sammy Guevara gets uh, revenge on Sean Spears. Inner Circle wins with Sammy hitting the 630 splash on Sean Spears in the uh, the ring in Daly's place. They have a big celebration. Like I said, I thought this match was, it was cool, but I'm just very, very, very tired of seeing matches like this, honestly. I feel like AEW does this. Like, they just do you know, weapon matches way too much, you know, you know. Like, I always feel like there's a good happy medium. Like, I feel like New Japan should do more because, you know, they do a lot of in-ring stuff. WWE, their matches don't matter because, you know, their weapon matches are usually pretty lame. Um, But I just feel like there's too much of these types of matches in AEW. But overall, I thought it was a fun main event. I thought this was a great pay-per-view. Serena Dweeb and Riho was awesome. Opener with Cage and Adam Page was awesome. The tag team match won me over with the Young Bucks, Mox, and Kingston. Casino Battle Royale kind of sucked until the last five minutes. Um, Cody Rhodes became Captain America. We don't talk about that. Uh, Archer and Miro was pretty damn good. Uh, The the women's match suffered a little bit in the beginning, but got really good towards the end. Uh, I marked the fuck out for Sting. That was awesome. Uh, The main event, of course, my main event, the triple threat world title match, was the best match on the show. And this match was a, a fun train wreck. So that's it for me. You know, just keeping it to one show because this, re- this review already was 30 minutes. Like I said, you know, uh, I don't really feel like doing the weekly stuff anymore. So I'm only going to do the important events. I'll do pay per views and important events and stuff like that. You know, maybe I'll go back to doing weekly stuff next time. But for right now, it's hard because there's a lot of stuff I got to do. You know, I got to run the YouTube channel and all that stuff. But you, 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 Skate92 for all the social medias. Follow me, you know, listen to the pod on Spotify and wherever pods can be found. You know, Breaker, Google Podcast, all that stuff. But yeah, everyone take easy. Go watch some wrestling. And hopefully we got some New Japan to review soon. But you know, that's that's my first love right there. I love I love me some New Japan. But you know, um I'll I'll definitely review the first rampage, you know, do a special review for that. AW Rampage. Um, you know, we'll get some more special events on there. NXT will probably do some special events too. I'll also do those. But yeah, that's it for me. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.